Hello guys, welcome to episode 4 of our NIST Access Control Explanatory Series. In this episode, we are going to go over the AC4 Information Flow Enforcement within system and between systems. And as always, please consider subscribing to the channel and let's get it to the next milestone of 4K subscribers. And also, please do smash the like button and the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload new videos. Thank you and let's get rolling. Information Flow Control, AC4. It is an access control mechanism to ensure that information transfer within an information system or component are not made or done in violation of organization or agency security policy. Information flow is the exchange of information among processes, systems, and components within an organization. All right, now so let's look at the control requirement in the 853 ref 5 AC4, Information Flow Enforcement. Enforce approved authorizations for controlling the flow of information within the system and between connected systems based on assignment organization defined information flow control policy. So you're gonna so basically this is saying that you're gonna enforce information flow within the system or between connected systems based on whatever the organization policy detect. So this control is enforcing that policy. If it's going to be a firewall rules, uh, routers, switches, whatever the rules may be, load balancer, whatever it is, this control is going to be enforcing the flow of information between or within one system. It goes into the various servers or various components of the system or even between connected systems, that is inter-systems, the way the information is flowing. Does it have to go through system A and B or C or is not transitory? It doesn't have to go through that. Whatever it is, this control is enforcing how the information flow between systems, connected system, or even within the same system, where the information can go and where the information cannot go within the system. So whenever you see this AC4 information flow enforcement, always think about firewalls, switches, routers these are the devices that actually control the flow of information between devices or even within a single device so when you read the discussion it says information flow control regulates where information can travel within a system and between system so this is the key here in contrast to who is allowed to access the information so the human component is not considered here. It's just the device component, the devices that are controlling the flow of information. What firewall rules do you have? What is the routing policy? You know, how is the switch connected? Is it a VLAN? Do they have a VLAN topology? These are what this control is talking about. It is not the human factor. And without regards to subsequent access to that information, Flow control restriction include blocking external traffic that claim to be from within the organization, keeping export control information from being transmitted in the clear to the internet, restricting web requests that are not from the internal web proxy server, and limiting information transfer between organizations based on data structures and content. Transferring information between organization may require an agreement specifying how the information flow is enforced and that is what ca3 interconnection security agreement that is the interconnection system how this system are interconnected and how they exchange information transferring information between system in different security or privacy domain with different security or privacy policies introduces the risk that such transfer violates one or more domain security or privacy policies. In such situations, information owners or steward provide guidance at designated policy enforcement point between connected systems. Organizations consider mandating specific architectural solutions to enforce specific security and privacy policy. Enforcement includes prohibiting information transfer between connected systems, that is allowing access only, verifying right permission before accepting information from another security or privacy domain or connected systems. 
That's the key, verifying the right permit permission. That is the key, verifying the right permission before accepting information from another security or privacy domain or connected system. Employing hardware mechanism to enforce one-way information flow. And then employing hardware mechanism to enforce one-way information flow. And implementing trustworthy regarding mechanisms to reassign security or privacy attributes and labels. It went further by saying organizations commonly employ information flow control policy and enforcement mechanism to control the flow of information between designated sources and destination within the system and between connected system. Flow control is based on the characteristics of the information and or the information path. Enforcement occurs, for example, in boundary protection devices that employ rule set to establish configuration settings that restrict system services, provide a packet filtering capability based on header information, or provide a message filtering capability based on the message content. Organization also consider the trustworthiness of filtering and or inspection mechanism. That is the hardware, firmware, or software component that is critical to information flow enforcement. Control enhancement 3 through 32 primarily address cross-domain solution needs that focus on more advanced filtering techniques, in-depth analysis, and strong flow enforcement mechanism implemented in cross-domain product, such as high assurance guard. Such capabilities are generally not available in commercial off-the-shelf product. Information flow enforcement also applies to control plane traffic, example, routing and DNS. So any device within your system that routes traffic DNS, if it is a cloud-based Route 53, you know, your security groups, your firewall rules, your routers, switches, load balancer, how the information or the, the data is being routed within the system or within the infrastructure is what this control is trying to enforce, not the human component of it. And also this control has a lot of control enhancement. Right, it has uh, control enhancement from enhancement one all the way to 32. But once you understand the base control, which is the AC4, if you understand the base control, understanding the enhancement is not going to be too much of a challenge. So, for instance, here we have information flow enforcement. The, the first enhancement is object security and privacy attribute, right? And then you have processing domain. You know, and then you keep going down, you have uh, dynamic information con uh, flow control, and then we have uh, flow control of encrypted information. We have embedded data types. We have metadata all the way to 32. This control has a lot of control enhancement. From one to 32, we have information flow enhancement process requirements for information transfer, and again, understanding the base control which is the ac4 once you understand the base control understanding these enhancement is not going to be too much of a heavy lift for you all right now now let's try to see how best we can simplify this control this control is to assess to make sure that the flow of information within the organization or agency's infrastructure that is between system and components are carried out according to their security policy and best practices. It checks the information or data as they flow through the communication ports based on routers, switches, firewalls, you know, security groups, DNS, Route 53, load balancer, anything that control the flow of information within a system. This control is this is what this control is enforcing to make sure that there are set rules, you know, that governs or that determines information is being routed within the system or inter system or between two systems or multiple system for that matter. Some benefit of information flow enforcement are it standardizes where information can be sent to within a system or between connected systems. This does not take into consideration who can access the information. So the human component here is taken out. Yeah, granted, human beings will set up the rules and stuff like that. But then again, 
this control is focused on the policies and the rules that are set on these devices and how they route information within a system or between interconnected systems. All right, so now uh, the control assessment approach. Let's look at some of the approach to assess this control or test this control. All right, so to ensure this control is in place and functioning as intended, design and functional effectiveness, we do the following. You obtain, examine the access control policy and procedure, the dash one documentation, right? So this, the reason why we always get the dash one documentation is, first of all, you need to understand the policy and procedure around whatever control you are testing. Once you understand the procedure and the policy around that uh, control, then you'll be able to apply what the company says their policy is or what the policies are and then test it against what is actually happening. What is the actual, uh, uh, what is the control doing, you know, actually. So therefore, the policy and procedure is the first thing that you have to read when testing any control. You read the policy and procedure, that is going to provide you some guidance or as to what is the way forward for you to carry out your control assessment. And then you obtain and examine system security plan, the SSP. The SSP is always, always necessary, right? You have the dash one control or the dash one documentation and the SSP. The reason why we do this is that the SSP is actually, you know, documenting the implementation, how this control is implemented. So you read the policy and procedure, you see what the policy is saying, and then you read the SSP, the implementation statement of that control that you're assessing, see how it is implemented. Make sure you pay attention to any discrepancy between the policy and procedure and the SSP implementation statement. If there are discrepancies between the access control policy and procedure and the SSP implementation statement, you can call that out. That's why, you know, PL2 findings are always the most common control findings you will ever get when you're doing security control assessment because of this you know, discrepancies between the documentation. So that's why you see that in all the controls that you are testing, you're always gonna read the access control policy and procedure, or not the access control policy, I mean the dash one control for that family, as well as the system security plan, the SSP. All right, now you then request the list of admins that are authorized to manipulate or change the routers, switches, load balances and firewall rules within the organization. Those admins that have the need to know, not everybody can manipulate firewall rules, switches, load balancer, and routers within the organization. So these are specific admins that are required to do that. So you can request a list of all these admins, make sure no one else has the capability you know, besides the admins that are authorized to do this change or changes to the routers and the network devices, you know, is doing that. No one else is doing that except the admins. All right, so ensure no unauthorized personnel have access to change these network device settings. Again, that is it. So once you have the list of all the required or authorized admins who have uh, the authorization to change these network device settings, make sure nobody else has the ability to do that without authorization. Review firewall rules and the interconnection security agreement to validate information flow. So the firewall rules will tell you what ports are open, what protocols are allowed to go back and forth. You know, if it is a, um, if it's a cloud system, you're looking at the security groups you know, within the EC2 instances or within the servers that are connected. You request current vulnerability scan or penetration test report and review for open ports and protocols. So if possible, get the current vulnerability scan. And if they have any current penetration test, look through and see what are some of the open ports. Hopefully that will be captured in the penetration test report. And then compare that with the policy. If those ports should be open, or they should be closed. This is how you test to make sure that there are, you know, there is a control, you know, on the system or between the connected system, how information flow between them. Number seven, ensure the network admins activities are logged and reviewed regularly. 
this is very important because these network admins they configure the rules they change the policy they change the rule set uh, the rule set they change the firewall rules and you know they configure the switches and the routers and then you know so whatever is being done make sure there is a log that is being captured and reviewed regularly you can ask for the logs uh, of network activity and who is reviewing this network activity by the admins all right so that's it for this episode our next episode will be on ac5 separation of duties if you find these videos helpful hit the like button so the youtube algorithm can expose these videos to more people and i will see you in our next episode